This is Necroscivo, and it is time for a battle video. I wanted to go ahead and get this up, because EVO is this weekend. After I get off of work, I probably won't be playing much Pokemon, um, because I'll be watching EVO. So, But today's battle is against Trainer Connor, one of my great rivals on Twitter. I was testing out another combination of my uh, Strike and Challenge team. Again, if you haven't seen the video for that, go check it out. I posted it. Um, he starts off with Crobat. I wanted to keep him honest here at the beginning of the battle. I know it was very likely he could just U-turn, but in case he had Taunt, I needed to see it. And now I wanted to kind of bait him into going for U-turn because Tyrantar is weak to it. And then he could hit my Ferrothorn, who carries Rocky Helmet alongside the, the Iron Barbs, to give him a lot of recoil damage just for touching me. He actually takes more recoil damage than I take from the U-turn. Um, so, you know, very nice there. I also n nicely get up the Sandstorm, which Ferrothorn, of course, is immune to taking damage to, which helps me figure out kind of some of the items that he has. Now he switches into Manetric, and then doubles back out into Mamoswine, which means he completely predicted my switch into Tyranitar. So a good play by him. Uh, I was afraid of the fire type attack, and of course, even if he went for Volt Switch, it wouldn't do much to Tyranitar. Here I expected him to set up his Stealth Rock, so I set up my own Stealth Rock, but he just went straight for Earthquake. Uh, fortunately, I have a lot of bulk on this Tyranitar. It's a really weird spread designed to make use of the speed boost from Scallopede if I manage to somehow pass it to it. Uh, granted, the main speed boost recipient is usually Heracross, but you know, sometimes Tyranitar can serve that need. Now right here he gets a critical hit on his Earthquake. That's not going to end up mattering until several turns later, uh, just because he doesn't actually hit me for a little while. I would have gotten up another layer of spikes or at the very least paralyze something most likely if I was not critical hit but because I was critical hit it kind of put me in more of an offensive mode and so I just kind of ended up throwing around power whips I tried to thunder wave the crowbat because I thought he was going to roost but he decides to just switch back out into mammal swine the earthquake coming from mammal swine does not do that much so I'm able to take it out with a power whip but that means he's able to go on to the mana trick and then Volt Switch and KO me. Uh, if I had more HP, he would have been at least forced to go for the Fire type move. Now, the way he's playing mana trick, I thought he was holding on to it just because of the Lightning Rod ability. But it's actually scarfed this entire battle. And I don't realize it until much later in the battle. I just thought it was his Mega Pokemon. He needed the ability Lightning Rod more than he thought he needed um, Intimidate. But, since it is Scarfed, and I don't know that until later, because it's naturally faster than a lot of the Pokemon I'm using, except for, uh, I think, just Starmie, I believe. Here, I just go out in the Scallopede, um, and I wanted to force him to go for Taunt. I thought I could KO him with a Mega Horn from that point, even though this is my bulky Scallopede. I have an offensive Scallopede, and I have a bulky one. The bulky one has Toxic Spikes, uh, and it's designed to live hits with Black Sludge, whereas the offensive one has Substitute, Swords Dance, Mega Horn, and Rock Slide. It's designed to KO something while getting speed boost. I'm sorry, not Rock Slide, but Tom Pass. It's designed to KO something while getting a speed boost that I can then pass onto the next thing. Uh, but fortunately, I am able to force him into KOing his own Crobat, which is good because this, this team has a little bit of trouble dealing with um, Crobat without Tyranitar. Uh, so I go out into my Assault Vest Gudra. I finally have bred a new one of these. This one is a relaxed nature. Doesn't take very good advantage of Sticky Web when I use it with Shuckle. But I expected Gramble switching in, so I just went for Flamethrower. I could have just double switched out, but I wanted to make sure that he was definitely going to switch in Gramble. Uh, of course, Fairy types are immune to Dragon, so going for a Dragon Pulse would have been a bad play right there. Now, I knew he would probably just go for Play Rough, so I switched in Tyranitar as Death Water and to get back up the Sandstorm. But he misses, so I kind of get to pay him back for him critical hitting my Ferrothorn earlier. Because guess who is faster than his Grand Pool? That would be my Ryza. So I'm able to take him out with a Rock Slide. And that's going to be great because now it forces him 
to go out into something and not only take a turn of sandstorm damage, but it forces him to let me see what he's going to do next. He ends up going into Amapom. I knew he probably just had Brick Break, but I didn't want to switch any, anything into a possible fake out if he tried to do that first. So, Ryza has definitely done her job though. I'm very happy with the way that EV spread has been playing out for me. Now right here I just go out in the Starmie just to go straight for Surf. I didn't want to bother trying to spin. I, it's not like I'm carrying Talonflame on this team. Scallopede's already down. Spinning it this late in the match isn't going to help me out too much. Now here I was like, odd that he brought in Manetric, I'm going to be faster than him before he Mega Evolves. And then he uses Volt Switch right in my face and kills Stariana. And, um, yeah, that means he's definitely Scarfed. <laughs> and that definitely blew my mind. I was like, wait, what just happened? I'm very confused. Uh, but that was that was very well played. He bluffed that Scarf very well during that battle. Now, the uh, I'm able to go into my Heracross here. He brings in Monarch, and fortunately, because I was able to put up Stealth Rocks and Spikes, I'm going to be able to guaranteed one-hit KO, this or five-hit KO, whatever, this thing with Pen Missile after I Mega Evolve. So there was no way he was going to live that after the Spikes damage, so I'm really happy I went ahead and put those up. I wish I had gotten up one more layer, because then this Manectric would have been dead from switching around so much already. But you know, semantics. Uh, he does, uh, Mega Heracross is my last Pokemon, and he has Overheat, and I live it because Mega Heracross has such amazing bulk. Really happy that I kept on trying to uh, breed, trying to get max HP, defense, special defense alongside the offensive and speed stats. So that was a fun battle. Came down to the wire there with Mega Heracross being my last Pokemon, I believe. Uh, and I just enjoy the battle. So thank you very much for the battle, Connor. And guys, if you come and watch Evo, let me know. Otherwise, at the very least, be sure to go check out the Striaton Radio, Stride and Radio Conference video. The signups for that will end on July 27th, so be sure to get those registrations in before then. Um, I'll leave that video in the description of this video as well. Have a great weekend, guys, and I will talk to you all next week. Bye-bye now.